even knows who you are. <laughs> are you even real? <laughs> you even real? Do you even exist? Somebody, are you a cartoon? Does somebody draw you every morning? I'm in love, okay? It's true love. Mm, it's, you're just sick. You're just a sick man. I want to see these cat fight. Let's be real. Um, are you the dirtbag? <laughs> Woke up at four in the morning. Yeah. I ran 15 miles. Came home. Vomited blood. Good. 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 Otherwise, you're fake and <laughs> Hello. You've seen the Dunes? You've seen the Dune movies? I've seen the Dunes. I've seen no. I've only seen one of the Dunes. Oh, I've seen the first Dune. I haven't seen the second. Is yeah. there like a new Dune out or something? There's Dune two. Dune, Dune two. Yeah. Okay. No, I haven't seen it. I haven't you seen should. It. It's great. It's really good. Good. It's good. It's good. I watched uh, another killer movie the other day. If you guys haven't seen it out there, it is pretty good. Especially any of you uh, JTACs out there would really like it. Tac peas. What's it called? There are any tack peas out there? It's called Land of uh, Land of the Bad or Land of Bad. It just it just about? it just dropped. Is it um, about whore? It's about whore. Um, it is not based on a true story, but a lot of the uh, a lot of the stuff inside it was pretty accurate, like militarily accurate. Mm. You know, you watch the movies and you're like, God, this is not even close. The way they talk to each other, the banter. They clearly had some sort of advisor out there, military advisor. It was uh, Delta Boys, mm. so it was like three or four Delta operators had to go in and recover an asset. Uh, it was a CIA guy that got captured. Go figure. Always a CIA. Guy. Always a CIA guy in there doing poking around where he shouldn't be poking around. And then uh, story of my life. <laughs> and then uh, we had a uh, uh, the attack. P went out there with him. And it, what was cool about it? It was like a, a team of Delta guys, but uh, J Tac guy saved the day. What I didn't like about it couple couple things was they made <clears throat> those tack peas they're competent they're not incompetent right right and they made him look like a private in basic training he was like fumbling around with the stuff they were like Ugh. he <clears throat> he was like debating on whether or not to take cornflakes or fruit loops with him on the uh to be fair tack on the aircraft question that <laughs> 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 anybody in the air force is like fruit loops or cornflakes corn and so he gets on the bird and he's fumbling around looking for his Fruit Loops because he chose Fruit Loops. Go well, figure. I mean, Go that's figure. probably the better choice, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, yeah no doubt. Yeah. Um, if they're not Frosted Flakes, definitely take the Fruit Loops. And he's all, uh, and he was like, uh, they were about to do an airborne operation, but it was going to be a Halo jump for all these that don't know. Uh, Halo is high altitude, low opening. And when he walked, when one of the Delta guys like walked in to go get him from the uh, from the dining facility that he was in when he was looking at the cereal, he said, you ever done a Halo? He said, you Halo qualified? And the JTAC was like, no. And he was like, all right, well, it's like airborne, only higher. But here's the deal, is they would have never... <laughs> It's not the way it works. That was the first thing that I noticed in yeah. that movie. There, it's not the way it works. You don't, yeah. you don't. Like, hey, are you? Have you ever done a halo jump in your entire life? No. no. All right. Well, you'll figure it out on the way down. It doesn't work like Military that. Military don't work like no, that. No, no. But some things were accurate. Uh, th uh, so halo jump thirty five hundred. I think 30, 35 to forty five hundred is typical is typical for opening on a halo. I, I I'm not halo. I'll disclose that. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not halo qualified. I just know about it. And I talked to Ryan a little bit about it too. So, um, <clears throat> but. 35 to 4,500 is uh, standard opening waverable down to 3,000 feet. And so that was accurate. He was like, wait until you're 3,000 feet, then pull the chute. Okay, cool. All for, right. a, for water, right. for water landing. Okay. So 4,500, depending on the on the foliage, depending on the canopy and like where you're landing and the terrain and all that. But for agua. Uh, but for agua, para agua, para um, agua. it is uh, 3,500 waverable down to 3K. So they got that down. Um, let me know if I'm boring you. I'm intrigued. Okay. Continue. Because I, I, I found it kind of fa fascinating. And okay, so now we're accurate, accurate, accurate to a certain extent. And then I asked Ryan, because Ryan, Ryan, who's one of the guys who, who works here at Tacticon, he was a combat controller. And <clears throat> I said, hey, is them putting on, uh, first of all, they're in a Blackhawk. I said, are you guys typically running Halo jumps out of Blackhawks? He's like, well, you can, but it's rare. And they're Delta boys, so I'll give it to them. All right, cool. So... He said, odds are they're jumping at 13, 14,000 13, 14, feet, no oxygen, which you don't have to have oxygen at that height, unless you're up there for 30 minutes or more. So dudes, no oxygen. Fine. Fair enough. It works. Then they put on like an oxygen mask before they jumped. 
So I asked Ryan, I was like, is that accurate? Do you oxygen up before you exit the aircraft? And he's like, absolutely never. That doesn't make sense. He's like, when we would never do that. Okay. So there was the, there was the first thing. Second thing is when they ran out of rounds on a pistol slide lock and then click, 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 click now. Right. Yeah. Now that's a Hollywood thing. Doesn't work like that. I get it. Right. It's the effect for the listener. Click, 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 but it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. You know, single action, double action, obviously. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, if you had a revolver. Kind of not. Yeah. Yeah. If you had a revolver, but not, but not, not really. Then they didn't have a revolver. These were all semi-automatic firearms. Yeah. If it's a semi-auto, it's. So it's still not going to go click, click, click. So I, I, it was, it was one of those things where I'm like, come on guys, like all this, they clearly had like special operations advisors to get them to kind of speak the language and move the way they were moving, which was great. But at the same time, it just, and I know they're not catering to vets, but could one of these fucking movies just cater to vets? Because I can't, there's not been one movie that I've watched where it's been, I, I can't think of one movie. Dude, I've, I've been able, Jarhead, dude. <laughs> I've, honest to God, that's probably the most accurate. Really? Yeah. Just yeah. the, <laughs> just the, the suck. Yeah, yeah, that that could be that could be the most accurate. Um, I just derailed your entire thought yeah, process. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, but you yeah, were very, saying very you, some to cater like directly to. Well, yeah, just make yeah. it accurate. Yes, yeah, right. Super. Make it as accurate as possible. So if you guys know of a movie that hopefully I haven't seen that has a little bit of military accuracy in it that doesn't do dumb shit like click 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 when your firearms at slide lock, which is the only other real thing that I had against it. Um, yeah, but what was cool about it, Tac P saved the day. So he was like the hero of the, uh, of the story of the story. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Suck it cool. Delta. Yeah. Suck it Delta. Nerds. What you know, <laughs> what, what you know, what, what you, know? you got Delta tip of the what? Yeah. Tip, tip of the, the what? Tip, tip of the, the beer, what? tip of the beer, bro. Nobody even knows who you are. <laughs> are you even real? <laughs> you even real? Do you even exist? Somebody, are you a fucking cartoon? Does somebody draw you every morning? How do I know you're not a spook? <laughs> yeah. I don't believe it. And he's talking know. about CIA. He's not. Okay. Yeah. Not a spooky, scary skeleton. Not a spooky, scary skeleton. Not a most scary. certainly not most the derogatory. Certainly. Not the derogatory. Carly's uh, gotten. Term. Carly's gotten incredibly uh, <sighs> locked into true crime. Carly is his girlfriend. Yeah. Okay. She's gotten. So, so inc- sorry, ladies. Yeah. Sorry. Bummer. Bumskies. Uh, I'm in love. Okay. It's true love. <laughs> it's true love. Uh, she's gotten really into true crime. So I'll come home, and she's like. You'll have no idea what just happened. Yeah. And I'm like, and I don't care. Yeah. She's watching one, uh, I think it's called Fame Kills right now. Okay. And it's all about like famous people. Yeah. And how they've either A, committed suicide or B, like been killed by people. Yeah. And there was only one of them in there where I felt genuinely like sad. Okay. So like um, we were watching it and she ended up passing out and I like kind of kept watching, I'll be honest with you. Dude, uh, don't. No I'm, shame I'm gonna, in my game. Don't have any shame in your game. No shame in I'll my game. I'll tell you something. I'll I'll tell you something when you're done. All right. That's a little more uh shameful. You know, a little more shameful. Oh. Yeah, much sh- more shameful. Shame party. Yeah. Uh, but uh the only one that I felt bad about was this YouTube singer who got super famous on YouTube, ended up going to the voice, doing like like really successful, and she was great. And then she got killed by a fucking stalker. Ah. Uh, and I was, like he came to the concert, snuck backstage, and shot her. Whoa. And then blew his own brains out. He wasn't even famous at this point, right? She no, was she on the was. voice? No, she was. She, she was, was famous at this point. She was on the voice though. Yeah. Was she like one of the like uh judges? Oh no, no, no. She competed on the voice. Yeah, but she, she wasn't yeah, she's she not famous like yet. You're com- you're competing though. No, no, she had already competed. Oh, yeah, previously was, competed. It yeah. wasn't. It didn't happen at the Voice. Yeah, no, got no, no, it. No. Okay, got and, it. And like he killed her, and that was like the only one that I felt bad about because she was like genuinely got a good it. human being. Yeah. And, but then all the other ones, it's like it was talking about the girl who's been murdered, and she hung out with this scummy guy, and he had some real problems, and he was involved in gang activity, and it's like, yeah, wait. So you're telling me she came to you multiple times, battered and bruised, and continued going back to him, and then she got murdered. I'm like, meh, I don't feel too bad about that. Meh. Or the or the guy, the guy who's like, yeah, he just overworked himself and did a bunch of drugs and then committed suicide. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah, I don't, I don't feel bad for you. No. 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 Like you did it to yourself. Yeah, I don't at all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there was a, I forget which one it was. 
like which actor it was, but yeah, my wife and I, you know, had a little argument about it because she was like, did you hear that this person, it was some famous person, like took too many drugs and killed himself inside of a, who was it? Oh, oh. Oh, it's magic. It was a, uh, God damn it. It wasn't Halsey. It was, it, it was, it was definitely a female. <laughs> no, 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 it wasn't. Oh. It was, it was, um, and it wasn't Jewel. Come on. Like one of those. Like blonde singer chicks. Blonde singer chick. I don't Ugh, know. I cannot for the life of me remember. I don't really But listen. lived a really good life. Made way more, much more money. I mean, she was a no talent ass clown. Let's be honest. And it like way, made more tune. money than she yeah. probably should have. Yeah. And lived a great life most likely. And then, uh, you hey. know, killed herself with drugs. And th here's the deal, dude. It Look, I was, you know, it's a, like I've had my fair share of alcohol and that's why I don't drink anymore and if I would have drank myself to death I would expect zero fucking sympathy I would give you zero like, sympathy zero sympathy yeah. like that dude is a fucking idiot he drank himself to death yeah there's a way out dude I would use you know some gamer I mean? words there's a way out death. there's a whole lot of things and I'm not going to talk about the ways out on this podcast because it's not you know you're not supposed to you know find me s somewhere else I don't know where you'd find me. Find me catch anywhere. Me outside, dude. Catch me outside, and I'll, I'll let you know. But <laughs> yeah, I, I like I've I've gotten through sobriety, but I had to fucking want it. And the people that don't fucking want it and then continue to drink themselves, I get zero sympathy for you, dude. Like just like, zero. No. Yeah. I I I empathize for sure for the recovering person who is attempting to truly get sober that just can't seem to, because I've been yeah. There. I've been I've been in that position where I was like, God, I just I just want I've been there. And so I can truly, you know, from from one individual struggling with an addiction to another, empathize and be there for for that person. But anybody that's not willing to help himself, that's just like, I'm just gonna do what I want to do and kill myself, you know. I mean, that's really what it is. It's suicide. Yeah. You know, it is self-inflicted suicide. What did you expect was gonna happen? Right. You put too much shit in your body that wasn't supposed to be in there. Yeah. So yeah. And if I wasn't, um, if I didn't come from that background, I wouldn't even speak to it. I would say, I don't know what it's like you know, being in that position. But I do know what it's like, and I do know there's a fucking way out, and you got to fucking want it, and you got to stop being selfish. That's bingo, really, bingo. Yeah, it's, the key. A, it's all selfishness. It's the it key. Really is. It really is. Yeah. Like, And that's why the programs that are out there will typically, the the focus in all of that is to rid yourself of selfishness. Right, destroy, because destroy the ego kind of. destroy yeah. Exactly. It's all about humility. It's all about destroying the ego. It's all about replacing the bottle with something else, which some agencies would call you know, a uh, power greater than yourself. And it doesn't have to be the guy in the sky. It could be with really whatever you want. Yeah. You know, some people are like, Oh, make it a doorknob. I think that's fucking retarded. But I will <laughs> say that if it's, it's gotta be anything but you, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. You know, Something it's gotta, greater be, than you. It's gotta yeah. be anything but you. So, um, yeah, I don't know, man. It like helped. And I was, I was fat, sick and nearly dead at some point in time in my life. That's I was me like right 240 now. pounds and yeah. You're just sick. You're just a sick man. I'm a sick sicko. But my deep dark secret yeah, hit, of watching things with hit, my wife. Hit me with your shame watching. train, dude. So my wife has fallen asleep watching uh, like Housewives before. You know. Wait, Desperate Housewives? No. Oh. Like the Real Housewives of oh. like Beverly Hills or whatever. Okay, I was She's gonna say it. I've been caught up watching yeah. some Desperate Housewives. Yeah. <laughs> and I've and I've caught myself going, and I I don't like know their names for. You know, I I don't I don't frequently watch these things. It's don't kind of like a, lie to me. it's kind of a byproduct of like me being in the room right. through osmosis. Mm. Okay, Le Lisa's one of them. Uh, I'll say, <laughs> okay, I know Lisa. I know Lisa. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be like, I was I was laying in bed and like, and I I was like, can you believe that? Can you believe she said that about Lisa Vanderpump? And I like look over and she's, she's asleep. I was like, oh, God. Fuck. And then I was like, well, I could change this right now, but. I'm kind of invested. And I, Dude, I've been and there. I, and I've I, been there, man. And I want to see these bitches cat fight. Let's be real. Like I saw this. I saw the uh, the build up, the build up, the build up. They're about ready to you're kill like, each other. You're like, and I'm not leaving. Sure enough, dude, next. they're fucking dumping champagne on each other's yes. heads. And I was like, God damn! Like, like there is. No, do you know why there's no real husbands of of anything or no real? There's like the real husbands of Atlanta. Like, do you know why there's none of that shit? I would like to hear your reason why. My reason why is because. Uh, dudes who are friends, like usually don't do that shit to each other. And it, it's my opinion when, how many times do you have a group of guy friends? Cause I see it happen in girl groups right. all the time. How many times have you seen a group of guy friends like genuinely just shit all over each other, talk shit behind each other's back, fuck each other over, uh. bang each other's girlfriends, steal from each other. You know what I mean? Just, 
Is that is it common? No, I don't I think surround myself one, with people. I think there's like one dirt bag that'll of sneak course. their way in. Yeah. Of course, there's but then always, they exercise them. There's yeah. always one dirt bag in every friend group, and everybody has one, even to this day, because someone's always got to be kind of like the dirt bag. And Everybody's if you don't know who that is in the audience, then it's probably you. Um, are you the dirt bag? <laughs> are you that dirt bag, step your game up. Yeah, but I. It, it's uh, it, it's like an interesting thing. Like it kind of only happens with, with women. And I watch, like the guys in this, even in this company, right? The the interaction, the culture, between uh, the men that work work in here. And there's not enough women to really make a claim for those who work here. There's right. only a few chicks that yeah. work here, so I'm not gonna speak to that. But it's not really like a backstabby type of environment. Everybody's no. pretty cool with each yeah. other, you know? Very but straight I to watch, your face. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But my, um, yeah, man, like there is always drama and that's all I'm, I'm, I'm going to end it right there. I don't want to get too deep into it, but my, my, my wife's company, she works with a lot of females and there is like just always drama. Well, and that's all I'll say about that. But so, Jesus Christ, there is just constant. Here's why. And it's nothing against you ladies. It's because women overthink to the max. Where if I walked in and I just fucking with you walked in and went, hmm. Yeah. You wouldn't think about that past me doing that. Yeah, no. Where, I wouldn't, where Sharon. Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> if Sharon came in. Sharon. And went, hmm. Oh. Ladies would think about that for the rest of the month. Yeah. Yeah. But never talk about it. Yeah. And then eventually boil over. Yeah. And then blow up about it. Yeah. And it's like. Dude. And it's just little things like, what did you mean by that? I can't tell you how many interactions I've had with a, with a, you know, with a female type that have like, you say something and you're like, what did you mean by that? I don't fucking know exactly what I just said. <laughs> Ladies, if there are any in the audience, There's we are one. too fucking retarded yeah. to think there, are, there is no more layers to the things we say. What we say is typically what we mean for the most part. Generally. I, generally. I don't yeah. like, I don't. I, um, unless he's a manipulative cunt. True. Yeah. True. But like real dudes are just going to be like, yeah, I like it. He's not fucking lying to you. The like if he tells you he likes to dress, he fucking likes to dress. I mean. The amount of times Carly has been like, what did you mean by this? Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know. I didn't think about it that deep. I just kind of said it. Yeah. I just like. Yeah. <laughs> Either I was just trying to be funny, I like know. I was trying to make a joke. I know. Like, or I don't know, you ask me a question and I was just trying to solve problem. I know. I'm just you trying give to me be two plus two. I try and give you four. Yeah. Just, I don't try and give you why I feel like it's four. <laughs> I just try to give you the answer. Does this dress make me look fat? I'm like, no, no. your ass does. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's what you gotta say. You gotta I'm just say. kidding, don't do that. Yeah. But no, it's um yeah, it's just very like I've never understood that where it's like, yes, of course I like that. Dress. I'm just honest with my wife about it. She's like, do you like this? And I'll say, fucking yes, no. no. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah, like just, that. Just be honest. I don't like that. The, like, it, you know, one thing that I don't like that I can't stand mm -hmm. and I had an ex-girlfriend wear these all the time. And I think that's mostly why I broke up with her. Actually, I couldn't get her to stop wearing them. Rompers. I fucking rompers. You're not a romper guy. No. I don't really like them either, but like I'm accepting of them. No. Yeah, so absolutely. You're, you're an anti romper. Anti romper. Anti romp. Oh, dude. Huh? Yeah. You could be Giselle, Brady's what ex what ex wife Brady's ex wife. So you're so telling you're me saying, there's a chance. So you're there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> um, you could be Giselle, Victoria's Secret model, in a romper, and nah, it's not doing it for me. Hmm. Not doing it for me. What is the, what is the thing that does do it for you? Oh man, you know what? I'm the old school, like early '90s look. You know the other thing I'm, I can't stand with. And now we're gonna we're getting into fashion, guys, on the two way pro cast. This is two way fashion. Cast. <laughs> this is two way fashion cast. I can't stand. I just you know what you signed up for. Suck it up and join on. <laughs> this is the only reason why I want to go over this. Is I really now that there's just a few people listening here. I want to see how many people like agree or like or like fuck i always thought that too oh i'm that's gonna get what, into my kink too that's man. all i want to <laughs> yeah. see is like oh, i always thought that too the, th the other thing i can't stand is the the new first of all flares are coming back and get the fuck out of here with that shit but i don't mind the flares as much they were in when i was in high school but the low cut low cut pant or low cut shirt low cut pant the low cut pant tight, like low on the hip are we, we're talking like circa 2000 yes yeah circa 2000 <laughs> Low, low cut, cut on the hip, 
right? Love like it. just kind of right over the top of the mm. ass. That was, those were the pants that I really liked. And I told my wife that I was like, I, I like those. And she, but now they've got the fucking ones that come up over your belly button. Yeah. Like oh, they're yeah. like halfway up your, the high waist pants. Girls love it. They do. They love my it. wife wears it. And I'm yeah. like, can you please just not? And I was like, why? Why? They don't look as good. And they, I think any man can agree those don't look as good. Some do. Some do. It depends. Okay. It depends on the pants. Okay. Um, some do, but ladies wear it because it hides their belly. That's what my wife told me. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, that is some bullshit. Bull- this is some bullshit. <laughs> yeah, that's some bullshit. Well, I mean, that kind of plays yeah. into, uh, that plays into like, uh, have you seen, oh. I'm sure you've seen it, the uh, like the newspaper articles or like just circling around on social media is the, uh, <clears throat> the unrealistic uh, beauty standards for women. Have you seen that? No. Like, so it'll it'll take like Barbie or like Victoria's oh, Secret. Oh, okay. Marvel. I have seen or stuff like, like that. Or okay. like superheroes or fucking even uh, comic book characters. Got and it. And it'll say unrealistic beauty standards for women, right? Okay. And it's always these articles saying that these are unrealistic. This is ridiculous. Okay. Have you ever seen one of those for men? Have you ever seen Wolverine in the comic book? Have you ever seen Wolverine? Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen Hugh fucking Jackman? Have yeah. you ever seen one man? Hugh Jackman? Ha- ha- Hugh Jackman <laughs> and Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yeah. Dude, and it, have you ever seen a single man go, this is an unrealistic standard? <laughs> yeah, no. You see this motherfucker and you go, yeah. I have to go to the gym right now. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. It's inspiration. It, it is like... I'm obviously a fucking loser. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I need to step my shit up. I know. We don't sit there and go, yeah, well, ugh, yeah, that's just unrealistic. And I don't know why you would put a human being like that in front of my wife when you know that I can't be like that. Yes, you can. If you fucking try hard yeah. enough. Like, I'll tell you this much. Every time I, for some reason, for some reason, for some it reason? works like this is what happens, right? My wife will see Chris Hemsworth come up on the fucking screen Me too. and leave a fucking snail trail all across the goddamn bed before she gets up to go grab another bag of cheez or whatever it is, whatever the snack du jour is. Yeah, me and when fucking she too, gets dude. Up go, yeah. And when she sees that, she's like, Jesus Christ, right? And then I see it. And instead of me going, what? What do you think he's, that's not right. Like, what about your husband? I don't do that. Dude. What I think to myself is, I need to step my fucking game up. Dude, if you I need to get like that. And I always hit the gym harder the next day. And I and it, it works for a period of time. And I'm telling you right now, and you know, my wife doesn't watch podcasts, but if she, you know, if she did, she would know my fucking secret. If she really wanted me to get anywhere near Chris Hemsworth, all she would have to do is just bring him up every day. Yeah. And I would be like, I'm gonna fucking do it. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Dude, it's, uh, but the thing uh, is, yeah. you got that beautiful blonde hair. If you just hit a cut super hard and grew out your hair, you could be Thor. Dude, but stop. like a shorter I'm Thor. Fucking th- <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna give you that one. I'll give you a good compliment, uh, but, uh, but I'm not gonna give you that a one. A shorter <laughs> Thor. Yes, yeah, yeah. You know what's interesting? Speaking of Hemsworth, um, that beautiful bastard. That bad of land of bad. It yeah. has Liam Hemsworth. And did you know there was a third brother? Yeah, there's three brothers. There's fucking three. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. She didn't know that. And when we saw the fucking three brothers, because she looked at me, she's like, "There's a third brother." And we looked it up, and both of us at the same time were like. Oh, oh, brutal. <laughs> like, it was like Liam two, and two, Chris are just two gorgeous, be- beautiful specimen fucking Adonises. And then you've got yeah, Luke. You got Luke. And you're like, damn, man. Poor guy. Fuck. Yeah. What happened? He's probably really funny. He's <laughs> probably really funny. Probably hung like a rhino. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, so, anyways, yeah. back to you. What's your? Oh no, you said it. Low cut pants. The the, yeah, the, low the low cut. cut oh, pants. but that's not the thing that really yeah, gets okay. it. It's a, just a, like a fucking just a good old fashioned traditional mini skirt or Ooh. overalls with a thong on. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Okay. The thong. Yeah. Underwear. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. But overalls. Uh huh. And what happened to the thong, by the way? Dude, where did the thong go, ladies? Dear, come on. It's like come on, step your game up. Yeah. It's like every once in a while, it's like well they. We wear it when we've got pants that you could see the underwear in. Like, no, dude. No, just rock, no. The, rock the thong, lady. Yeah. Rock you don't want thong. us walking around. And white, like, where, when did it go back to the regular panty? Fashion is pain. Fashion beauty, is pain. Beauty is pain. Yeah. Yeah. Beauty. Let's get back to it. It hurts being beautiful. Yeah. Um, I mean, nobody wants us walking around in fucking Hanes whitey tighties. No. 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 No, no, my wife doesn't Absolutely want that. Absolutely not. Yeah, you don't no. want that. No, you want white underwear nice, with the you fucking want some skid nice mark. Boxer briefs, dude. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Speak of the devil. Speak of the devil. You're not the devil, Belly. That was just a 
expression. Yeah, there's Colin right now. <laughs> okay. All right, we're back. All right, so yeah, I'll give you? you two things. Okay, dude. give me two things. My first thing. This is this is hot. This is this is the peak for me. Stockings or thigh highs. I'm a sucker for them, dude. Oh, yeah. got it. Yeah. Like with that, just that, the thigh high, but it's got to stop at the thigh. No, no, not it, the full. It, it can be a full stocking. Oh, really? Yeah, or fishnets, you know, that whole whole shebang. All the way up? Yep, can be. No, the stocking. I like thigh highs though. Little, yeah, the thigh highs are there. Thigh highs are good. I like yeah. the librarian look. It's a good look. It's a good look. You know, it's you gotta good. say, gotta like say. a plaid skirt. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. The the blouse tucked in, hair pinned up, glasses on. Mm. Basically, Britney Spears circa 1998. Yes. Okay. Uh, Fair enough. Number two. Okay. The uh, the one piece the one piece bodysuit with jeans but it's showing the hip. Oh, yeah. you like that? That's okay. a good look, dude. That's a good look. That's a good look. Okay, fair enough. I can dig that. I'm trying to think if there's any other ones that uh, that got left out. Well, you know what it is now. Hmm. The baggy pant is back in. The baggy pant. That's true. The baggy girls pant are wearing is back baggy in. pants. Yeah, I dig a chick in a pair of cargo pants too. Oh, that's good. Yeah, with a midriff. Yeah, that. Little little crop top. Crop top. Crop top. Like any dancer that you yeah. would oh. see like in a nineties like My time in LA was rough. Because <laughs> <laughs> all my friends, uh all my buddies were dancers. Oh so yeah, and out. they like to wear those. Yeah. yeah. Like the Adidas shoes yeah. with the uh, cargo pants so and the All the dancer girls. Yeah. They were like, Hey, you're gonna you're gonna come with us to the uh we're gonna go it's like not a recital, but they're just going to class, right? They're just going mm-hmm. to dance class. Yeah. My buddies would invite me and I'd be like, Is that a fucking question? Of course, course I'm gonna. Of course yeah, I'm gonna come hang out with you. Yeah, yeah. All these well, yeah. speaking speaking of women, speaking of women, I speaking wanted. Speaking of them, what what is more? Because women are typically in cosmetology, right? Generally, generally, yeah. cosmetology. I'm not saying that that excludes barbers, but but we all know men do it better. <laughs> what <laughs> is kidding. more dangerous than running with scissors? What is more? Let me rephrase that. What is worse? What is worse? Than running with scissors. What can possibly be worse than that? Hmm? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? I got nothing. I got nothing for this. I'm stumped. <laughs> Scissoring with the runs. Shit. <laughs> yeah, Damn come it. on. It was right in front of you the whole time. Get out. It was right in front of you the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I want to uh, put this out here, just since we've been on a conversation about women. Two things. Felines. One, felines. One thing. First thing of the two things. Mm-hmm. I want to remind you, gentlemen out there. Gentiles. Gentiles. It is okay. It is, in fact, accepted to be a bitch with your woman. You should always be a strong man. But it's okay to be sensitive. Mm. It's okay to love your woman and be what the boys would call you. A a pussy back a, bitch. A, a baby back bitch. Baby back bitch. Yeah. And that is the only lady is it acceptable with. No, it is. Love yeah. that. Love your woman. Vulnerable. Yes. Yeah. You, yeah, yeah. Being being vulnerable. I mean, that's why I. I mean, that is like, that is such a a huge advantage to being in a relationship with a woman is yeah. is that layer of vulnerability to peel back the onions, get sensitive, soften up a little bit because ultimately that's what they want. Yeah. You know? Don't don't buy into the uh, don't buy into the rhetoric that is like you have to be an alpha male at all absolute times and you can't show fuck that shit, dude. Yeah. Be sensitive with your girl. Be a man, but you can be sensitive with her. Yeah, just love don't your, be sensitive love, with yeah. her like while you're being attacked. Yeah, yeah, don't do that. Yeah, don't yeah. get socked in the mouth and turn around and be like, <laughs> he hit me. No, kill the guy. Yeah, and then Allegedly. you could go home and let her patch you up. Yeah, and you could tell her it hurts. Yeah, it's and, fine. Do, and do the roadhouse thing yeah. where <laughs> where you're like, oh yeah, I got stabbed right here, and you. S- Spray some alcohol on it, and she's yeah. like, "Oh, you got a stab wound." And you're like, "Yeah, it's no big deal," and you just stitch it up yourself. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know how many like you uh, know how many snail trails have been left to that? A lot. You know how many <laughs> snail trails have been left to my story about uh, a knife fight? A knife fight from my I had I had an appendectomy. I had uh, my appendix removed. Am I, I about got a big old fucking uh, scar down here on my stomach because I got it done like in nineteen. 19- <laughs> 72 back when what are you fucking these 90 app- years old <laughs> fuck dude I, well I see these appendectomies now these incision scars and mm-hmm. you, you can't even see them yeah it's a tiny little it's thing. a tiny little like it's like half an inch mine's like six inches yeah it's fucking it does and, look rough yeah it's gnarly well, yeah yeah but anyway, I'm pretty sure they used a they're like, what is, dull and rusted well, knife <laughs> what is that and I'm like oh, that's a fucking knife fight where it's like so I was rappelling out of this helicopter back in Afghanistan. Back in the teams. I fucking caught it back in the teams. Caught it on a... T- <laughs> no shit. There I was, knee deep in Haji Valley. <laughs> was I scared? Hell yeah, I was scared. 
Scared I'd run. Scared I was going to run out of Taliban. <laughs> God damn it. Um, Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Were you scared? Hell yeah, I was scared. So but, I got a um, question. I have a, before you have the question. No. I have a funny story about yes. the Real Housewives of Beverly Squills. These, these, <laughs> these bitches, my wife's watching it one day, just talk about caught. Caught. Caught up like Usher. Oh. And... We're watching it. We're watching, there's always this. There was always this blanket on the couch that we had. I think when she first. I think you told this story before. Did I tell it on the? I don't know if you told it on the podcast. But I don't you know. Definitely told it to me. I told it to you. Tell them. But I'll tell them. Yeah. And it's a because it's a funny story. It is. It's slightly funny. It's funny for me, not for you. It was not funny for me, because I realized in this moment that I've been duped. Um, we're watching. We're, I've been bamboozled. <laughs> I've been bamboozled. I look up at the screen. My wife's watching some fucking $50 billion mansion with some $50 billion housewife. And I notice in their video that the same blanket with a letter H on it, and I don't know brands, the blanket with a letter H on it is draped over that lady's couch. Mm. And I realize in that moment that if she has the exact same blanket that I have on my couch, then that blanket was not purchased at... Uh, TJ Maxx. World Market. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. Or Target. Yes. Um, and I looked at it, and I looked at her, and I looked up at the screen, and I was like, how much did you pay for that? <laughs> she was like, she immediately well, hit I you with saved, math. I saved like $2,000. And I was like, Jesus, you didn't, you didn't save $2,000. You spent, it was like, I don't know, like $1,600 on a blanket. On a blanket. Oh. I looked it up. I, I looked, I went it's to, a, I was it's like, a Hermi, er, it's a Hermes blanket. It was a Hermes blanket, yeah, dude. With the H and I looked for. it up and I was like, and I was like, blanket with an H. Maybe she wouldn't tell me what it was. And I was like, blanket with an H. You're and then Google that wins. thing popped up. Yeah. <laughs> son of a bitch. Yeah. Oh, snuck that by me. Anyway. That's uh, rough. That's was, painful. It was. That's painful. What was your question? So the question comes from the Discord. The Discord. Well, the Discord. well yeah, let's now do that we're, an intro. Now that we're 20 32 minutes, minutes in. 32 minutes into the pocket. Welcome to Hi. the two-way broadcast. And what we're about to get into is questions from the Discord. I'm, and if you are not in the Discord, then you need to get in the Discord. You need to get in there. What are you doing with your life? Wet your beak. Put put the tip in, just the tip, just, just to see tip. how just to see how it feels. Dunk your balls in the water. And uh, yeah, come in. Water's nice. It's Water's real. Nice. It's warm in there. Yeah, we've been having a real. We have been having a gay old time. It's in a. There. Uh, it's like a warmed bidet. There has yeah. been tickles the taint. Community, nice. friends, camaraderie. So and I, all of the above. I was just watching uh, Unsub today. Well, I, I've been unsubscribe podcast. Yes, I've been nice. working my way through an episode because I can't sit and listen to something for more than like ten minutes at a time. Yep. <laughs> uh, but I was listening to an episode with a YouTuber called nerdrotic i believe it is okay and he he brought something up and i kind of i kind of dig it he's like i fucking hate the word community because it reminds me too much of communism <laughs> <laughs> he's like so i call my shit fellowships <laughs> <laughs> and i was like jesus christ i vibe with that I've, so fucking hard <laughs> yeah fellowships remind me of aa oh does it yeah because that's what they call i it. want to come up mm. with a different word other than community so leave your yeah. your suggestions please. down below and please we'll, tell uh, me. we'll pick through it yeah tribe is good tribe's good tribe i like tribe tribe build a tribe build a commune Tri Ugh. that's extra fucking communist Cringy. yeah that's uh, just like half of communist i feel like tribe i just immediately think of like jocko okay yeah. I don't know if Jocko actually says tribe, but that's like what my brain goes to. Yeah. 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 The that's there's definitely a def, we don't fit the the Jocko brand it's or my the, tribe. Uh, right. We don't fit that. Woke up at and, four in the morning. Yeah. I ran fifteen miles, came home, vomited blood. Good. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I ate a bowl of nails with no milk. Yeah. Cried. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I went. I went into the ocean. I got hypothermic. I was in the hospital for three days. Good. good. I'm like, no, that's not good. You should have got out of the fucking water. Your wife cheated <laughs> on you. Your child committed suicide. <laughs> your best friend told you that he hates you. And your mother said you're adopted. Good. Good. It's like, what? Yeah. No, that's not <laughs> no, good. No, none of those things that's are good. That's not good. I was watching this one dude. His name is Andy something. And it like he pops up on my on my like shorts feed all the time. And he like teaches like, he's like a sales 
like guru on the internet and he teaches like all these sales tactics and he was, and I just saw it today and, and I'll paraphrase here, but he was like, he was like, you don't need, he's like, your friends want to go out and have a drink. You say, no, your friends want to help you say, Hey, can you help me move? You say, no, your wife wants to spend some time with you. You say, no, you say no. Because if I did that shit, when I was trying to make it where I am today, I'd be fucking broke. And I was like, Okay. So just be a bad friend and a bad husband. <laughs> and a bad husband and a bad father. <laughs> is he divorced? I know, dude. I'm, I'm like, like, is this guy fucking I'm divorced? Like, yeah. I'm like, hey, I'm sorry. I can't be there for your graduation, kids, because I have to sell some cars. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's like if it's your okay. buddy invites you out for a drink, dude. you can say, hey, man, things are a little rough right now. I can only come out for one. Yeah. Or I've got some other things like... I can come out for one. And I truly believe that like there are certain things that you do have to cut out of your life. Right. And he said, oh, that's what he, and that he ended with this. Like furry porn. He, he, like furry porn. I can't give this up. I I, I can't. I have to keep at least that. I, <laughs> I can't give up the furry porn. We all, there's moderation, okay? Uh, moderation. So he, but he, he ends it with this. He was like, he was like, if you, none of your friends care about you. Nobody cares about you. You will find out really soon that the people you think are there for you aren't there for you. And I'm like, dude, you don't like, what? how do you what? know? You've got some, you got some shitty friends, homie. Yeah. You like, got, you feel like it's a friend. I don't know. Like, but that's guru culture now. It's guru it's culture. Guru culture. Yeah, yeah, it They're is. always trying to find this like next thing because it's all been said. It's all been done. Yep. Zig Ziglar finished it off when he did his shit. Yep. Except his was actually learning how to make sales. Yep. Uh, yeah, these yeah. other guys are just assholes. Yeah. They're all trying to be like, okay, what can I say that's going to try and empower someone that's going to make like really focus them down? It's the, it's the, if I can survive without heat and water, so can you. Yeah. And, and you it's, know, it's you like, know, what? The gurus out there, the thing that drives me crazy is like all these motivational like business videos, like you can't stop, you can't ever quit. It's it's now or never. And it's always like around business and they always talk about the gym and they have like B-roll of like people working out. And I get it. It is important, mind, body, and soul. Yeah. You got to maintain the spirituality. You've got to maintain your relationships. You've got to maintain your business and you've got to maintain your physical well-being. So yeah. I totally understand that like health and wealth and spirituality are all interconnected. But a lot of these gurus, it's just all like, it's just all about like, got to be in the gym. Gotta like, you don't gym. like, Wes that's Watson. not, you, you know what I mean? Like it, it it's important. It's yeah. most certainly important. But if you are obsessed, you've got to kind of pick like you're, you're upset. You really like being obsessed is really the key component of being successful. Yes. I, uh, genuinely. Yeah. Like I will say that with all like wholehearted, like you have to be obsessed with what you're doing and what your market wants. Otherwise like you're fucked. Yeah. Like if you, if you don't, cause like some other kid's going to, he's already in his fucking mom's garage ready to eat your fucking lunch right now. Yeah. But if you are obsessed, you will get there, dude. Like you will, if you just like, cause it doesn't matter if you're obsessed that your obs obsession means like it doesn't matter what gets in your fucking way. You're gonna how get many through times it. you fucking you know how many times you fucking fail, fall down, learn, get back up, all that shit, and that that type of stuff. It is right. And I used to hate that shit. It's like fail, fail big, fail, fail hard. hard. And there's some truth behind it, only because like you're not gonna fucking learn unless you actually you know go through some failures. But there are ways around failures, by the way. I wish, and a lot of the gurus don't talk about it. It's called reading books it's called educating yourself on something before you do it wow it's, it's called, almost it's almost like other people have done these pitfalls before and you can learn shit. from them yeah i know it's like get a fucking mentor follow what they do and then try just to like emulate you what can <laughs> with the oh, two-way pro course <laughs> <laughs> your yeah. episode is sponsored by the two-way pro course where you can learn how to build a business in the second amendment community that no. was completely <laughs> unplanned by the way it but was no, it was an unplanned yeah. but no no absolutely yeah. true and it's it's you can learn that shit. And I think the biggest thing that's misconstrued is not that you should fail, but it's that you shouldn't be afraid to fail. Exactly. Because that's failures what it is. will happen. Yep. You just can't be afraid of them. That's true. Because that will prevent you from taking that next step. 100%. Right. Yep. And and it's fear is the biggest roadblock to most entrepreneurs. Right. Fear is the biggest roadblock to going to the gym to uh, entrepreneurship, to eating well, to, to, it, to, to asking that girl out, to asking the girl out, to getting vulnerability. I mean, think about all the things that we don't have in our life. It's all predicated on fear. What if I don't get what I'm, what I want? What if I lose what I have? Right. That's right? Why and that's, that's really the epitome of fear. If I'm not getting what I want and losing what I've got, 
right? Right. It's all based around that. But yeah. if you can get past that not giving a fuck and you could just become obsessed with the fucking mission, you got to have a mission first. Yes, you gotta really, figure out you gotta, your fucking You got to figure out what the mission is and become <laughs> obsessed with that fucking thing. You'll get it done, dude. Like, it, I, I truly fucking believe if somebody was absolutely obsessed with curing cancer, putting a rocket on the moon, I don't give a fuck what it is. Like, you, you can fucking do it. You can do like, it. Like, you will do it. Yeah. But it doesn't mean you have to shit all over every fucking relationship that you have and, and not help your friend move. You know what I mean? Still like, don't help like, him move. Don't, <laughs> Still don't do that. It's not worth it. Don't fuck do that it. guy. Don't do don't it. Don't do it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> dude, I, love, I saw, I can't remember what it was, like a meme or something. It was like, sure, I would love to help spend my only weekend off Moving your entire house for a couple slices of cold pizza and a beer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so moving, I can understand the, hey, can you help me move? I can get that. The thing that I've never been able to wrap my mind around. I think I know exactly where this is going. Are rides to the airport. Oh. Nope. Didn't see that, that coming. I, that is, I, I never understood. Hey, man. Can I get a ride an hour and 15 minutes away to the airport? Okay. So let me get this straight. There was a guy that I knew at one time that had me go pick him up. Now it's two and a half hours to SFO, to Round. San Francisco Air Trip. Round trip. Uh, airport. Yep. No, five hours. Like two and a half hours out there in traffic, two and a half hours back. Oh, in traffic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It took. Wait, what? Yes. Had from me, your place? From, from El Dorado Hills. It's only like 50 minutes from my place. How is it so far from you? San Francisco? San Francisco. SFO, sorry. SFO. I San thought you said SMF. No, San, San Francisco. Francisco. My apologies. Yeah, so yes. he had an international flight. I was like, what the fuck? He had an international flight, and uh, I even said, like, you, sh you sure you don't want to, like, just take a new? He was coming in, wanted me to pick him up. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Hold you up. want me to drive two and a half hours to come grab you and then drive two and a half hours back when you can just... Like take an Uber. You could rent a car for fifty bucks. Yeah, for fifty bucks, and then drive, and then only one person is is taking two and a half hours to get to point A to point B. Right, and then you're spending less in gas. Right. Yeah. Just do that. Never understood it. No. Never understood nope. it. Nope. Like, hey, can I get a ride to the airport? I get it. Like, wife, girlfriend, somebody lives with you. Yeah, drop me off at the airport. Like, yeah. I totally understand that. But like, Especially calling the, another the, human, the individuals that please you. <laughs> Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Yeah. And maybe he just wanted to enjoy the company of Jake for two and a half hours in a car. Go fuck I yourself, get guy. that. <laughs> but, dude, like, that is ridiculous. <clears throat> yeah. And so I never really understood the, it's like, just take an Uber down there. Like, from here to Sacramento Airport, yeah, it's like a, like I said, a 40, 50 minute yeah. drive, and it's a $40 Uber ride, and it's, you know, or park your car, keep it there overnight. Right. It costs you $30 for overnight parking. I'm going to spend that much on gas on the way down there and back. Right. Didn't understand it. Never yep. understood nope. it. I yep. don't get it. I don't Maybe get you it. guys get it. Maybe you can tell me why that's a thing. No. But especially, like, look, if my friend was, like, if I knew he was, like, collecting unemployment, which my friends don't collect unemployment because I don't kick it with dudes that don't have fucking jobs, just saying. Just throwing that out there. Just throwing that out there. And, look, I'm not, I'm not trying to be a dick. It's just one of those things where, like, you you really do, like, there. You there, are what you eat, dog. Yeah, there, there is a product, and I get it. If somebody, if my friend fell on hard times and was like, "Hey, dude, I can't find a job," I'm I would be work. like, "Oh, I can't be your friend anymore." I would <laughs> fuck that guy. Yeah, like, yeah. You don't have time. That's not. That's not. Dude. That's not what I'm saying at all. But if like I just had like friends who were like leeching off the government all the time that weren't employed, it's He's like, like, yeah, I got I a job and then got fired so I could get back on unemployment. Yeah, <laughs> I don't relate to that. I don't hang out with people like that because I don't believe in leeching off the fucking government. So I don't do it, and I don't kick it with people to do it. But if I had the friend who had been recently unemployed and he was like, nothing to do. And I was like, Hey man, like, do you want to come out and drive me to the airport? We can have an amazing conversation and do a thing. And you know what I mean? Grab lunch on the way down. No problem. But other than that, I don't see any purpose of getting right. rides from other people from the airport, especially when everybody's lives are very busy. When people have kids, wives, families, jobs, busy, own businesses. Yeah. Doesn't make any sense to me. Doesn't make sense. Anyway, don't ask me for a fucking ride to the airport. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what I thought you were gonna say okay. was, I'm joking. I I, I don't mind. I, I'll, I'll drive you to the airport. You're not no joking. One. I'm gonna cut that out, dude. <laughs> um, what I don't understand is when somebody asks you to move, and then you show up at said moving date, right? And their shit is not packed. 
Oh, God. Like their house is still just unpacked. And it's like, well, I need yep. you to help me pack and then load it up. It's like, no, no, no. no you no. call me for things you can't move by yourself. Yes. Like large items like a TV, a couch, a desk, right. a bed. Right, right. I will help you move said things. Yes, but you are absolutely right. Um, you pack the things, and we move the things that are unable to be moved by one human. Correct. That is moving. Yes. Good call. Yeah. Yeah, etiquette. Yeah. Etiquette. Typical moving etiquette. Yeah, pack up literally every single thing in your house. You leave out one pair of clothes. You pack everything else away. You buy yeah. paper plates. Go yep. buy paper plates and paper cups. That's right. Right? You use those. Your homie gets there. Everything needs to be packed. Preferably, you've already started loading the stuff that you can load onto the U-Haul. Yep. And then you go, hey, I need help moving X, Y, and Z. And then he loads it up with you. You drive it to the new place. You unload it. And then he says, bye-bye. See you later. You can unpack your own boxes. You can put away your silver. And your homie's there for, at most, two hours. Yep. Yeah. 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 And then you get to unload the rest of your shit. Yeah. That's how I did it. Yeah. Yeah, and there's no, oh, be careful with that and don't rush that. If you need to be careful with some shit or that somebody else is giving this? you free labor, that type of stuff, then wrap it up. Wrap it up, dog. Wrap it up, Wrap dude. it up. You know what I mean? Put some blankets over it, wrap it up, but ain't nobody coming over there to be extra careful with white gloves helping you out for free. Ain't nobody. Because mm -mm. nope. the only time that moving happens is on days off, typically. Yep, weekends. And yeah, or after work, which is even worse. Oh yeah. Yeah. Don't Nobody, do don't be that guy. Don't be that fucking don't be guy. That fucking hey, I'm guy. moving after work today. No thanks. Yeah. Anyway, what was the question from so the Discord? So let's jump into the question, which I believe was from Marcos. Just uh, getting macros, in just getting macros. into the meat and potatoes of the uh finally getting into the podcast after forty seven minutes. I'm happy about it, dude. <laughs> this has been a great opening. Um, I really liked this question, so we're gonna ask it. What would you consider to have been your biggest mistake during the Tacticon saga so far, and how did you overcome it? Also, when was it that you absolutely knew this is what I was meant to do? Ooh. 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 Dude. That's good, right? Damn. That's deep. That is so deep I put my ass to sleep. Yeah. Well, the biggest mistake. Missed Let's start steak. with steak. Missed steak. I never miss a steak. Oh, there's been so many mistakes. It is really hard to nail down exactly one of them. I wish I could, you know, I, I should be more thoughtful in the process of now. Oh, man, I, I, need, I need to think about this for a second. I need, to, I need to chew on this. I will say this. I most definitely, one of the biggest mistakes were the things that I didn't do. I put and arranged priorities in the wrong place mm. with Tacticon. Um, I think the, the th my biggest regret, at least, maybe it's not a mistake, but my biggest regret, like hindsight, I would have, God forbid I call it a community. The community that we have, the people that are listening right now, right. like that, that, the Discord in general is like, I I'm telling you right now, man, it's like, it's probably my, like, the joyous thing that I get out of this business is being able to truly communicate with the tribe. The that homies. Is the, it's just the homies, man, yeah. that, that believe, that truly understand the meaning of the Second Amendment, that we, that we can all connect regardless of race, color, creed, that we all have these fundamental rights. Right. And these guys that we can, I mean, it's just, it's an amazing feeling. I'm getting chills just talking about it, just understanding that there's so much, so many more people like me. My regret is not putting all of that effort in sooner mm. and focusing on things like Amazon and thinking that my brand was my logo. A brand is not a fucking logo. Nope. It is not a logo. The brand is like whether or not somebody gives you permission. Like if you have a brand, a brand is, um, will they miss you if you're gone? If they miss me when I'm gone, I have a brand. If they fucking don't, then I don't, I yeah. don't have one. Then you're just, you know thing. what I mean? You and I were talking about this the yeah. other day. It was something that is it, not, it's a very unoriginal thought, but it was, it's something that, um, uh, Seth, it's a Seth Godin thing from one of his books. He talks about <clears throat> if like, we all can agree, like him or not, we all know who Nike is. We can all, we all have an understanding of Nike's culture, who they represent, what they represent, We've got a really good idea of that when they started endorsing Colin Kaepernick after kneeling for the flag. Right. So again, not endorsing Nike in this sense. However, everybody knows that they represent a thing. 
Right. You think Nike, you know exactly what it is. You know what it is. If Nike started a hotel, you would know exactly what that hotel would be like. It would probably have a lot of workout equipment. It would probably have a juice bar. It would probably have a certain type of people in there, very physically fit. Uh, sweat very and open, camel toe. Sweat, camel toe, probably pretty progressive, right? Um, lots of be, orange and neon. Lot, lots of orange and neon. People, uh, they'd be playing the national anthem in the background. Everybody would be kneeling on the down. ground. Yep. You would know what to expect if they made a hotel. Right. If Hyatt made a shoe, <laughs> nobody would have any fucking idea what that shoe would look like. No clue. Because Hyatt doesn't have a fucking brand. Right. So for me, it was so important learning this concept of like, of what do we represent like genuinely and being able to find the people out there, even in small numbers. I think the people, the amount of people that watch this podcast, very, very small. It's like, you know, anywhere on the low end, we've had three or 4,000 views. And on the high end, only when we talked about fucking Lucas Bakken, did we get like 60,000 views? <sighs> Go figure, right? Talk about the body boy, get all the views. Jesus Christ. He's still, he haunts my dreams. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it, uh, all the podcasts d- from now on are just going to be about Lucas Bakken. Just constantly <laughs> talking about <laughs> Lucas Bakken. Um, so it, I wish I would have been able to connect sooner. It's mm. led it's created so many, it's just fulfilled. It's so much more fulfilling mm. and meaningful doing the work that we do now, knowing that we've connected with the target market, with the, with the people who agree with us, whether or not they've been, there's plenty of people in discord, never bought a Tacticon product. I don't give a shit. Right. That's not what it is. Not yeah. Tacticon discord, but connecting with, with people really figuring out what they want from a business perspective, incredibly helpful. I can really understand. I was so focused on demographics that I forgot about how lucky we are in this day and age to have psychographics. What makes people tick? Like, what do they truly want? What do they dream of? What are your dreams? Like literally, like what are your dreams? And you can, you know that because now we have the ability to communicate with each other in mass. And we never had that before. The only thing that we had before was how old are they? What area do they live in? What is their, what is the median income of this particular subset? But gone are the days. Now we can figure out what do people genuinely care about and then cater your product and services to that. And so I wish I had done that a lot sooner. I think that was the biggest fucking mistake that I had ever made in the business was not genuinely getting to know the customers at a very, very early stage because I would have been able to truly want the bigger you get, the harder it is to pivot. Mm -hmm. The ship is harder to turn, right? It is very difficult to change directions once your boat gets a little bit bigger. Um, and, you know, we had to do a lot of changes and a lot of pivoting and, you know, things that once we started realizing, oh, our our target market is this, it is not this. We've always held the same core beliefs, but we never shouted them from the rooftops like we mm-hmm. do, like we did before. So, um, yeah. And then what was the second part of the question? What, what, how did it all start or something? Um, and what was, what was the moment? Um, when was it that hit you? that you absolutely knew this is what I was meant to do. You know what's crazy? Is that moment hit me when you and I were sitting in a podcast. It was like right before a podcast. I remember the moment. You and I were sitting right here, and it had nothing to do with making products. It had nothing to do with anything. It had everything to do with connecting with people who I think I had, that share podcast. a set of values. Because yeah. I remember I told you, I don't know if it was actually on air or not, but I told you, I said, there is nothing more... I said, I feel like this is my mission in life is to preserve freedom, at least in the capacity of the Second Amendment. Yeah. And if I can die on this hill, I will be happy. I will be a happy, happy man. Occupationally, it will satisfy everything that I need if I can just serve the Second Amendment, if I can just serve the Constitution of the United States, if we can carry the torch from our founding fathers who so brilliantly laid out the freedoms that we are, that are God-given, the freedoms that we have inherently. And I, and I, I think it was in that moment that I realized it. It was not when I was making, cause the thing is, is like when you start a business, like oftentimes you're just like, okay, I need to, you know, I really want to make a better mousetrap. I want to make a better product. And that's what like the purse holster was. I was like, you know, my sister was like carrying in a holster inside of her purse. And I right. was just like, oh, cool. Like I'll make a thing that to where she can actually like keep her firearm in the same place in her purse at all times. And then she used it. She liked it. And we fucking continue to make it for other people who used it and liked it. But there was no real 
And it was just kind of like, oh, cool, I learned how to make a product. Right. Oh, cool, I learned how to sell it. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. cool, you know? And it was just, there was no real meaning behind it. The meaning was built through connection with the customer and really understanding what the fuck I was doing here. And I think there was always been an inherent passion towards the Second Amendment, but understanding that we've got a bigger purpose here. And the more I got into this field, the more we saw the the vulnerability of the second amendment and kind of like how it's just how how unsafe it really is mm -hmm. from from the from the political agendas the attacks the regulations it it's just uh i think it was in that moment with you i mean that's 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 the answer to that question where i was like i like that's when it clicked i was like this is this is the mission and it has nothing to do with products it has everything to do with serving the second amendment and that's when you know there there was <laughs> There was more to it because I had started technically the two-way pro marketplace prior to that. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I wanted a marketplace that would compete with Amazon, that would serve the Second Amendment by funneling all the money back into the Second Amendment. Because what does California have now? What, what does the federal government have? They have an 11% excise tax on all the firearms that are manufactured. California has an 11% 11, 11 firearm sales tax that's going to go on top of every firearm purchased. Right. So 11% to the feds. And, an, and that's paid by the manufacturer. You don't, you, nobody sees it, but that's right. already paid. It's already baked into the cost of your firearms. Yeah. There's another 11% that's about to get hit on a sales tax. And here's the problem is California leads the fucking way. They lead the way always, whether it's wages, business, Second Amendment stuff. We always kind of start that fucking train, and then other states are like, oh, that's a great idea. $20 minimum wage for fucking fast so food. So what we're hearing right now is all of you guys that left the state, we need you all to flood back to the state. Yeah. So that's, I'm, I'm serious, man. It's like, so if they're, well, what are they going to do with the 11% excise tax? They're going to, and it show it outlines what they're going to do. Right. They're going to put it into safety. They're going to put it into firearm safety. That is another way of saying we so, are going to put it into. So they're sending me to a CAG works class. Yeah, uh, no, is not, that what that means? That's another way of saying we are going to use this money to take your rights away from exactly, you. Exactly. Yeah. Because <clears throat> Their mentality is everybody's safer without a gun. So they can justify taking that tax and then pumping it into more legislation that removes people's rights to carry firearms. Absolutely. I'll so an answer to that question was, so we create a marketplace to offset that. Mm -hmm. We create a marketplace where all the fucking commissions earned on that website when it, that anybody sells on are going to be pumped back into the 2A. And it just... It doesn't even get us ahead. It just kind of hopefully one day it balances it out. Can you imagine like Amazon giving all of their profit to the Second Amendment? Jesus I think Christ. That's what I want. It, that's what we're trying or, to fucking build here. And the web's in the site. Is not, what's that? Or 10%? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But just any profit that Amazon has earned, if they dump that into the Second Amendment or even 10% of the profit, whatever it is, 1% of their profit, it would change the whole landscape. And so I, I just, I have this, oh, I have a dream that <laughs> I really do. Starts I mean, with a dream, man. But it really, I mean, that's, that's, my, that's my dream. That's my goal. And the only way that we could get this to work is if it was completely nonprofit. Mm -hmm. If there was like no skin in it for Tacticon, if there was no skin in it for Jake or you or anybody else other than the guys that were on the marketplace selling their goods, they can make a profit. Right. But the commission that gets earned from the site, that 10% that gets pulled, that goes into the second amendment that goes into the two a and hopefully it crushes fucking Amazon who doesn't, and you don't have to compete with Amazon. There's no Walmart. They're There's not, no target they're not plus letting you sell in their shit. Anyways. You can't sell that shit on there anyway. Yeah. So it's a market. You don't even it, have yeah. to fucking compete with them yeah. at that point. Anyway, I just, that, that is just part of, to answer that question. These are the things that I'm doing now that fulfill me, genuinely fulfill me. And, um, you know, it's a, it's been a, a slow roll. I didn't, I don't, I don't think I woke up one day and go, boom, this is it. This is exactly what I have to do. It's more of, uh, you just kind of find yourself there. I think, you know, yeah. you just keep doing the right thing for long enough with something that you're passionate about and you'll see, like, it wasn't me that came to the realization. It was me connecting with the community, like the people that like operate with us. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking customers and guys in discord and guys in the comments and guys on YouTube and guys on Instagram, like Connecting with the community and the guys that we go out and, you yeah. know, and we meet the other, you know, gun influencers and stuff. These guys, 
it, it's just understanding that like, wow, it's so much bigger than, than us, than this. Like, right. There's such a huge movement behind what we're doing. It's in it. I'm proud to be a part of it. And that's, I think, ultimately what, what kind of fills my cup, you well, know? Well, again, it, it, it's, it's kind of like what, what I say about <clears throat> these, the, the companies in this space, it's like, tell me another industry that is solely predicated on the preservation of a human right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Maybe the press with free freedom of speech. Yeah. But they're doing a great job, aren't they? Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, uh, the I would say my biggest um, regret maybe is with making videos with trying to chase analytics. Yeah. Rather than chasing what makes us happy. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. trying to chase like, oh, how can I try and it's, you should always look at your videos and look at your content and go, how do I make this better? How do I improve? Yes. Right. That, but that's what you should do with your life. Yeah. And everything you do. Yeah. But like with the right. content, when you make something and it does really good mm. instead of going, okay, well I need to obviously emulate everything about this and chase the analytics to try and get more followers, to try and get more likes, to try and get more views. Well then it's going to take away that little bit of, well, I didn't want to make that video because yeah. I'm not passionate about it. I wasn't yep. excited about it. I made it because I was trying to chase 10 more followers, right? So to that, it's like, just kind of do what you want. Do yeah. what makes you happy and keep going. There's 7 billion people on the planet. Yeah, A million are going to like <laughs> you. It's good odds. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that also begs the question, like, would you rather have a thousand people that loved you or a hundred thousand people that kind of liked you liked you. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you're, if you, if you make shit for everyone, then basically hold, hold on one second. Can we, but it uh, getting back, sorry for the interruption, <laughs> getting back to what it. What do you though, mean? Like, there was no interruption. <laughs> yeah, no, just, there was God, just, just a got it. clap. <clears throat> you want to, you want a thousand people that like you right. or that absolutely love you or a hundred thousand people that like you. And obviously I think we could, the number is just so irrelevant because if you make shit for everybody, if your brand is for everybody, um, then it's it's basically saying we make something for everyone and and you're everyone. And it's just that's kind of, that's pretty that's pretty yeah. fucking vanilla if you ask me. Yeah, I think the <clears throat> moving into a little piece of advice for anybody that's getting into any particular business or maybe you own one a or a piece thing, of candy. That's yeah, little little some some or anything. If you just want to start making social media content, there's a couple things that I'll say here as you develop your brand and like who you are, like you have to genuinely stay true to who you are because I think what's going to happen is, and what will happen is you will ultimately resent what you're doing. At first it'll feel good. The follows start coming in and the subs start coming in. You're like, Oh shit, look at this. It's amazing. All these people, but they expect the thing that you were making when it wasn't really you when you weren't really doing something that you wanted to do, you were doing something that they wanted you to do. And old, did, eventually you're going to fucking resent it. Right. You're going to resent it or them or the process. And it's, it's unsustainable in my opinion. Well, I mean, you can look at like a bunch of, uh, in influencers, right? You can, mm -hmm. all these people on social media, um, there's tons of them, tons of them. I, I know a few of them personally who have gotten to a point where they're like, I'm tired. I'm exhausted, guys. Like, I don't really want to do this anymore. Yeah. And it started out as something they were super passionate about. Yeah. But then it turned out to something that they had to keep doing to fulfill the audience. Yeah. And it's like, um, I think Papa Papa Meat is a great example. Um, I met him in Vegas. Super great guy. Yeah. Hilarious to the core. But he makes animations. And he started out doing these animations on YouTube. He was really passionate about it, loved what he was doing. He still enjoys making animations, but the thing is, he started putting one out every single week. Yeah. And it just became a fucking slog. And he's like, yeah. I'm done, dude. Yeah. I'm not passionate about this anymore. Yeah. But, like, I'll put one out when I want to put one out, but like, right. I'm just, yeah. I'm burnt. And not when the algorithm wants me to put one out. Right. Yep. Exactly. Like, totally get that. Yeah, dude. It's, yeah. And that's <clears throat> the reason it's not, this is not a shameless plug. It, it really is the reason why I wanted to start a course. I really enjoy scripting and writing mm -hmm. the course that we're doing. Um, I it, There are certain things that I don't, right? But I know 
that it's a means to an end. It got to a point where I was like, okay, at first, when I first started, I was like, I really like it. It's kind of a diary. Mm -hmm. And then I got to the point where I was like, I don't like this anymore. Right. Doing the course. Like I legitimately was like, I am starting to really resent it. Not like, like this. It, yeah. yeah. Cause I knew, but I knew I needed to get through it because I knew at the, the, the carrot at the end is being able to mentor people in the community mm -hmm. that is part of the course. I, I want to be able to walk people through the process of starting a second amendment business. I want to get people involved in like, in, in just perpetuating the common use theory of all these things in our industry. Herd immunity. So herd, <laughs> yeah. Herd immunity. Really? Yeah. I mean, yeah. If people get involved from a mon in a, in a financial, financially involved, it's just one more layer of commitment to the second. Amendment. Right. You know what I mean? Another person it's, who's willing to die on that hill. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're not going like, to take away my fucking livelihood. Yeah. yeah. Let alone my rights. Now yeah, it's my livelihood. livelihood. And it just, it, it, it gets everybody that much more invested in. And I know that if I get, because I love mentoring. I spent 45 minutes on the phone mm -hmm. with John today and he called me and he, it's got nothing to do with what we do. Right. He does like tunes for Audis and he built this software that's like, you know, borderline, absolutely, it's, it's amazing and it's borderline, I think, one of a kind. Mm -hmm. And he just had some licensing questions and I just sat on the phone with him for fucking 45 and I love that shit. Right. I love it. And I know I like it. I know I like it because I, I find myself looking at the clock going, oh my God, it's been 45 minutes when yeah. we've been talking and, I, and this I was, have to do work. This was great. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? So it's, it, it, it's a labor of love. So you got to get through the, the hard stuff to really get to the, to the fun stuff, right. you know, and there's so much fun stuff that, that comes in with running. But if you guys want to be a part of the course, I will say this, the link will be down in the description to sign up and in the next week or two, we're getting there. Happening. guys. We're getting there. I, he's, I, he, he's working. You're working night nonstop. and date. Non stop editing and I'm scripting and I'm trying to do all the things and getting it all done. And yeah, yep. we're, 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 we're really pushing as hard as we can. We're getting it. Um, and w once the course has launched too, expect it to be pretty much updated regularly. Yeah. Cause it's yeah. only really at this point, probably 30 or 40% done as much as it feels like it's mostly done. I know there's so much more to add, but I think the real value is going to be in like the mentorship and the community and being able to yeah, help, help and, each other out. And plus two, like it's one of those things where like you can build a program, right. And like from, from my, from my little example here, DaVinci, right. Mm. In the editing software, mm. Right, you can create this editing software, and you yeah. can teach people how to use it. You can teach people how to cut. You can teach people how to, you know, move clips around. But then it goes, well, how do I create this transition effect? Mm -hmm. And you go, ah, oh, well, now I need to make a thing on how to do the transition effect. I never thought about that. Right. Well, then you make one for that, and then yep. it's, oh, well, how do I do a transition effect that looks like a glitch? Oh. Well, how do I color grade, right? It's yeah. it's all these different little pieces that eventually fall into place and that are super niche, right? You say they compound on right. each other. Yeah, yeah they do. Yeah. It's like, first you learn how to color grade, but then you learn how to qualify your skin tones. Mm -hmm. Well, then you learn, you know, X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. right? And you keep expounding. So like in this course, there will be some like on sourcing your product. There's an entire category on sourcing your product. Right. Eventually... We'll get to a point where there's a subcategory in sourcing your product. Yes. That is down to a specific niche of yes. a specific thing. Absolutely. Right. And it's that's, like. You're absolutely right Yeah, about and, that. and it'll yeah. get to that point through not only continuously building the course, but also just like these questions. When, yeah. you, when you go, hey, I don't see <laughs> it in here. How do we do it? That's exactly right. And that's that's the whole that's the whole plan is really to get people in there and say, I think I got everything in there up to this point, but I know I missed a whole litany of shit because there's questions that are going to be asked where I'd be like, I probably just assume somebody knew how to do that and right. they don't. So we got to make a module right. for it. We got to make more, you know, content around it. Um, I, I will say this, that eventually, especially going to your point with that guy that did the cartoons, what was his name? Uh, Papa Meat. Papa Hunter. Meat. Okay. Yeah. So when you, you will eventually get to a point where in any, venture where you're like, okay, you kind of start burning out a little bit, right? It is okay to kind of transition and move into other avenues that excite you. You do want to focus on the core mission. We right. do have to focus on making tactical products, Yeah, but look at where, <clears throat> look at where it went. It went into like a lot of content, a lot of social media, getting people involved into the second amendment, bringing people in that have never shot before and you educating them on like very simple things on, on, on how to shoot mm -hmm. tactical movements, things like that. Right. Just it, it's that type of stuff. It's okay to like branch off. It's, 
it's not okay to lose complete focus and then try to do go 10 directions at once. You really do have to do one thing at a time and do it really fucking well and then go, okay, I think this is fairly autopilot. I right. need to, then I can go over here. And I saw, you know who we saw do that? We, when you and I were looking at, when we first started doing media mm -hmm. and we were like, how, who do we, who do we really respect that kind of keeps and captivates our attention like through every single scene, every five seconds, something is happening. Do you, do you remember that guy? I'm trying to remember. It's uh, film, film, film booth. Yeah, yeah. Film booth. Film booth. And then one day. I was about to say like filmmaker. No, it, was film it, it was film booth. Yeah. And then in this guy is on YouTube and it's just amazing, amazing videos and amazing editing. And he teaches you and in this really cool way. It's a very niche category too. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And he, uh, and then one day he made an announcement that said, you know what? I really appreciate every, and this, he was killing it, like yeah. absolutely crushing it, like a lot of subs and doing great analytics. Yeah. And then he said, I'm done on YouTube for this channel and I'm going to go do other things that really kind of are meaningful for me. Right. And I feel like I, I, felt, this out. I yeah. felt, I felt really bummed out because I was like, damn, I, I don't get to like, you know, binge any more of this content. But at the same time, I was like, good for you, dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? Follow your heart. Get it done. Yeah, you can always transition into something else. You can always do another thing. You can be a female if you in California will pay for yeah, it. In California will pay for it. You can transition there. And I will end on this. I you don't have to end on this, but I will end on this. Okay. When it comes to, you hear a lot of this, and I think it's fucking nonsense. And I used to believe it to nonsensical? be nonsensical. I used to believe it to be true. Yeah. Which is, just be authentic. Just, we hear that a lot. Just be authentic. Just be yourself. Just be authentic on the camera. Just, just, you know, just be however you're feeling that day. This is a complete facade. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Don't, don't put on a persona that doesn't, that isn't you. Right. But being authentic by definition means I'm going to make whatever I want unapologetically and do whatever I want, regardless of what you think. If I'm having a bad day, fuck you. If I'm, if, if it just didn't come together that day, F you. Right. Right. So I think that is, uh, I think that's suicide in my opinion. And the reason why I do is because people don't, they're the, the one thing that there is a finite amount of the most scarce resource in this world is time and attention, time and attention. And anybody that's, now a minute flight or um, uh, an hour 15 into this podcast, that is an hour and 15 minutes that they could have spent doing anything else. Right. And if we don't come correct and bring as much value as we possibly can, there's a million other people they can go fucking watch. And it, so it's, it's respecting the time yeah. to a degree. Like it's trying to offer something. Yeah. Entertainment, humor, knowledge, right. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And being authentic would mean, you remember that day that you and I sat down in here and I was like, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm not just, feeling, I'm this. not feeling it right yeah. now. And we just had to stop because we could have done it. And if I thought I'll just be authentic, I'm not having a good day. And I would have wasted the time of everybody listening out there. Cause I was not in the fucking mood to do this. It wouldn't have been hot. It wouldn't have been hot. It wouldn't yeah. have been cool. I wasn't on my shit. And, and I don't pay for tickets to go to a fucking concert. Like every time I go see Taylor Swift, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. You but, don't pay to see but, Taylor Swift <laughs> off her game. No, no, you she's don't. not going to walk out there and be like, sorry, sorry guys, guys, I got a super sore throat. I can't really sing today. And I'm just going to sit down in this chair and not dance because my legs hurt from the last concert. No, she's going to like, are you fucking, yeah. <laughs> They'd be like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, like we paid like $900 for the nosebleed tickets just to watch you sit in a chair and not dance. Absolutely no. not. It doesn't. You shake that zero <laughs> ass that you have. Yeah. You shake it right now. <laughs> yeah. You satanic <laughs> yeah. monster. It, it's, it, if people are paying you with their attention, then you have to pay them with the A game that you bring forward and you don't yeah. get to use, I'm just being authentic as no. a fucking excuse to be a dick when it comes to content, when it comes to anything, right. you don't half ass a product because like, oh, I'm just being authentic. I'm being authentic. It's what I would use. Well, I don't care. No. Yeah. No. Or I, the thing that I hate in business is I wouldn't. <clears throat> I wouldn't make that because I wouldn't use that. Fuck you, dude. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's about them. And that's like this number one thing. And I see it all the time. Well, I wouldn't use it, so I wouldn't do it. 
but it sounds great. Right. Sounds wonderful. Rolling off the tongue. Well, if I wouldn't use it, then why would I sell it to them? Because maybe they like shit that you don't, homie. Right. You know what I mean? Maybe other people have different tastes than you, and maybe you are actually the minority. And Now, don't take this as your idea is a good idea. No. There are still some bad ideas <laughs> out there that are, that are bad products. So, yeah. okay. All right. Yeah. Glad we cleared that one up. <laughs> and I hope I made it like super clear when I said the biggest mistake that I that I made was not getting to know more of, of these guys in this community yeah. and more of the customers and everything sooner with, I haven't had some like absolute tragic fucking failures, which dude, I'm telling you, like there have been mistakes when, when I let off the gas on certain things, I let off the gas, mm. like one mm -hmm. of my biggest mistakes, uh, I'll tell you a, a monetary mis mistake that cost about $800,000. It was hiring me. It was hiring you. Yeah, I and embezzled it, all in, of it. <laughs> in, in a sense, in a sense, I it was hiring you. And let me explain. <laughs> it was <laughs> when you when you and I took off down this journey. Yeah, which has been amazing. I let off the gas on um, Amazon FBA inventory. No, it was, it was having me move down. What? It was having me move down. Having you move down, having me move and down. working with you on a regular yeah, basis. Yeah. No, it has nothing to do with you. I'm it has everything I'm to just, do. With I'm, I'm joking. Let's put it on Kyle. But <laughs> yeah, let's, put, let's put it on anybody but me. <laughs> I I let off the gas on uh, on inventory. Inventory in this business, believe it or not, not marketing, not advertising, not accumulating new customers, not generating revenue, not accounting. Inventory is the number one inventory. Inventory is the number one hardest thing that I've ever had to do in this business. And when I let off the gas on supplying Amazon's FBA stuff, mm -hmm. um, it ended up costing when I worked all the numbers out and the revenue that we lost up to was about eight hundred thousand dollars. It was FBA the single means fulfilled by fulfilled by Amazon, yeah. right? And like feeding that machine, mm -hmm. um, I backed off it a little too much. I lost all my fucking rankings. Um, I I did not focus on the, um, like the actual, like my own, something that I owned. It's a great launch pad. Right. Amazon's a great launch pad. It's like a great place to like, ah, I'm going to put my products in it and we're going to make a bunch of money and it's going to fund the other things. I didn't go fund the other things soon enough. Mm -hmm. I put way too many eggs in the Amazon basket at first. And so I was kind of beholden to them. And when I let off that gas, other people started taking up on the rankings. Um, tons of like Chinese companies, Chinese sellers started coming in and just for lack of a better term, raping me and uh and did it it was did significant damage to the tune of almost a million dollars to the business and that was the biggest single financial loss that we've taken um now do i regret it of course not because it gave it like i said it put us in this position that really fills my cup mm -hmm. but but um the mistake that was made was i gave it that much attention in the first place right i didn't I didn't too many eggs in one basket. Too many one eggs time. in one basket, man. Yeah, yeah. I did not uh, diversify the portfolio, uh, if you will. So, yeah. Hope that answers the question. A little, real long winded. It was yeah, a good one. Don't no, ask me. Good. Don't ask me business questions. Don't ask I'll, business I'll, questions. I'll, I'll talk for forty five minutes. <laughs> good. <laughs> Fucking good. Yeah. So I've been seeing a meme. Well, not kind of a meme. Eh. I've been seeing a picture go around. They put meme faces on it. That's why I said it was more of a meme. And it was like five books that mm. a man should read. Mm. Um, it had uh, the dialogues by, um, what is it? Not Aristotle. Plato? Is it Plato? Okay. Whatever. Call it Socrates. So, whatever. Uh, meditations, you know. With Marcus Aurelius. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 1984. George Orwell. Yes. Got it. Brave New World, things like this. Yep. Um, what's a book, in your opinion, that every man should read? Oh man, such a sophisticated question. It is, you know. Oh man, my my books are, I. It's gonna sound real lame. No, dude. But if if you're it. if if it's outside of the business realm, mm -hmm. and it's just give me two, give me two. No, uh, I'm gonna give you one solid book solid that I book. think like genuinely that every. Can I give? Okay, I can give you two. I can give you maybe one for business, and then one for, one for business, and then one for uh, just. Being a man, <laughs> just sure. operating in this world sure. as a good human yeah, being. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, so the day the Daily Stoic Ooh, has so good. has genuinely like 
I would say changed, I it. changed my life. Yeah. Uh, and just going through Marcus Aurelius's meditations and, you know, and then branching out into his other works outside of it. It was more of kind of an introduction to me into stoicism, but I felt like it was probably one of the best ways to get involved with stoicism. Um, and then as far as uh, a book that changed the way I saw things uh, from a business perspective, it was a book called Rework, and it's a really short read, and it's a great read. And it's just about, it's called Rework. And it's just about, look, dude, you don't have to, the status quo is dead when starting a business. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have all the bells and whistles and do all the things. You can do whatever the fuck you want to do, how you want to do it and how your customers, how your market wants it done. And it is, it showed me the beauty of being small in a big business world mm -hmm. and how impactful it can actually be. A lot of the strategies that I had in my business completely changed. The direction that I was taking the company completely shifted after the book. So I was like, fuck that. I don't have to do all this. I could do less and give more value. It was just a, it was a very, very good, very concise read. And in fact, I think he said he chopped that book down from, <laughs> I don't, it was something insane. He, uh, in the book, he tells you, he's like, this book was like 126,000 words that we edited down to like a oh, uh, 42,000 words. And he was just, it was basically like, damn dude, you could have made this but, giant thing, but he was like, <clears throat> it was unnecessary. Didn't it didn't need need all that. Didn't need to be. Didn't need to be. And the premise of the book, he, they, they've had a successful software company. Mm -hmm. And so, um, in the software company, is a very, their software is very basic. Uh, people have, what, what'll happen is people like it because it's easy to use and it's inexpensive. And they, they will have customers say, can you add this? Can you do that? Can we have this? And their answer is just, no, you can't. No. Because this is what we do and this is who we are. And, 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 and for lack of a better term, it's people like us do things like this. And if you want to be along for this journey, then this is the software for you. Yeah. And if Here's you the don't, you can get if, on. And if you don't, it's not the software for you. Right. And and I and that's where I re kind of realized that like Tacticon, yeah, dude, there's a lot of people that hate us and that hate the products. Rock on, you can't bro. you can't hate us for what we stand for. Right. You can't. Nope. Otherwise, you're gay. Fake and gay. Fake and gay. Yeah. <laughs> like, but you can't you can't hate what we stand for if you if you stand for the Second Amendment because we agree in those terms. Yeah. You can absolutely hate my product. So you right. can hate the fact that some of the stuff that we have is sourced from other countries. And many of it's much of it's made here. But um what what I'm getting at is if somebody doesn't like us, then we're not for you, dude. Right. And it, I think that book just taught me that it was okay to not be for everybody, man. Yeah. It's okay to like, I'd, again, I'd rather have a thousand people love me than a million people like me. The, the way I always, so. the way I try and look at things, especially, you know, part of my job being the social media comment realm. Yep. I always try and remember, hey, 50% is going to hate you no matter what. Yep. 50% might like you, mm -hmm. but 50% is going to dislike you. Right. 7 billion people on the planet. 3.5 billion people will like you. Yeah. I'm good with those numbers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I'm good yeah, with that. I'm good, I'm good, <laughs> I'm with, good, I'm good with that, that. number. Three point, <laughs> what Nolan's saying is 3.5 billion people love him. 3.5 mm -hmm. billion people know exactly who I am. And I am, you gave me a book very generously yes. a year ago. Yes. On my birthday. Yes. And I haven't read it yet. Yeah. And I'm ashamed. But the reason why I haven't read it is because I, dr I truly do want to, a lot of times when I read books, I will just kind of, I will glaze over them. I will page, 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 turn, page, turn, page, yeah, turn, really, glaze, but I know it's important to you and it's important to me that it's important to you. So I really, when I sit down with that book, I really want to read it and I want to read it for what it's worth and well, I want to read it and reread it and, and genuinely benefit. And that book is Five Rings. Yep. And, and that's so, you should say that because that is in, the book that I that was going to say. That is the book that you're saying. Yeah. Uh, yep. the, the book of Five Rings, uh, it is technically by Miyamoto Musashi. Um, he, uh, he was a kind of a samurai, uh, back in the day. He didn't really serve a master. Um, but he was a swordsman. I got uh, swordsman is a word to put it. He was a swordsman. He won over, I think it's 60 duels mm -hmm. to the death. Damn. Jesus. Uh, 
Yeah. This dude was a... He he was of the two-sword style. He fought with two blades, and he fucked people up. This guy was like the narcissist of the... Uh, not narcissist. The narcissist. Nar- the narcissist of the Roman era. Yeah, dude. Just an amazing gladiator. Narcissus? <laughs> narcissus. <laughs> the narcissus of the Roman era. Because I think narcissus was uh, a Greek god. You're right. Yeah. He was narcissus. Yeah. The Roman gladiator. Anyway, uh, go ahead. But this book, it is his writings, his scrolls, about not only his sword style, but about it's a it's a philosophical work on the martial arts, the way of walking alone, and how to be mind, body, and spirit one in one and all. Um, and so when he talks about martial arts, and this is part of what I wrote you in in the letter on your birthday, which was when he talks about sword player, when he talks about stances. You can really take his words and put it into everyday life. Like he'll talk about developing a good base to meet your opponent head on. And instead of taking the opponent head on swiftly sidestepping to avoid the brunt force of it Mm. and gently deflecting and moving off. Right. And you kind of take that and you go and and the way it's worded is, is very eloquent. It's almost poetic. And you kind of go, Oh, I should be prepared for it but I should be ready to step aside and let that flow by me. And like, mm, uh, got it. His, his way of walking alone of walking, walking the, uh, the path alone is really great. It's, it's, and one of the parts that I really like about it is he, he basically says, cast off all material items except for your weapon. <laughs> <laughs> he said, get rid of all. He's like, lose all care for your material possessions except for that of like your spear or your sword. Was he uh, oh, Buddhist or Taoist? Um, I would say he fall fell more under Buddhism. Okay. So uh, more of the ascetic path mm-hmm. where material yeah. belongings yeah. Uh, have no place for yeah. me. It's no place. And more of a well, Taoist approach from it's kind of like you go uh, you, you go with the flow, you don't swim upstream. Right. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. you you can fight the stream but learn <clears throat> how to fight it correctly. Right. And in that path of walking alone is that path of of being able to be okay, you know, without. Yeah. Right. And so it's it's just a good work and everyone should read it. It's fantastic. Yeah. I'm looking forward to reading it. I really am. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, if you guys have books that you want us to read, Put down in the there. comments, por favor. Yeah. And I will poke around because I'm always looking for the next good I, I need to stop <clears throat> reading business books. I yeah, it, it's it's bad. <laughs> it's it's you, bad. That's yeah. all I do. Is you, I, you I need just, to read a book for pure pleasure. Is dude, what you need to do. Oh, that is pleasure for me. Oh, fair enough. That is well, then keep doing me. it, dog. Yeah, I need to get in some like romance novels or Ooh, something. Some <laughs> smut books. <laughs> some smut books. Dude, some good dude. old fantasy smut. Yeah, I was just her at loins a, were burning. Mm, mm. Her snail trail mm. was long. <laughs> 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 snail trail came. Off the bed and onto frothy. the frothy. It was frothy. <laughs> um, I was just at uh, Carly's sister's house for Easter, and what was it? We were talking about baby names, um, and she brought up some sort of baby name, and and she was like, "Well, this one's actually really popular right now because of this book series." And and like she mm. went off, and I said, "Is that some sort of fantasy smut book?" <laughs> <laughs> and she's all. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> and I was like, of course it is. <laughs> Women. That's All hilarious. the same. All the same. Man. Well, I don't have anything else. Do you have anything else you'd like to touch on? I have not. I One more thought. thing I would like to... Uh, I, I do not. I do not have anything that I would like to touch on or molest Fair in, this, in this particular podcast. Fair we enough. went completely off script of the things that we, I think, planned on talking about. That and I matter. think that was completely okay. I'm good with it. Yeah. I'm happy too. with that. Yeah. I'm satisfied. <laughs> Are you guys satisfied? Are you guys satisfied? Did, I've been left satisfied. Did you climax? Because we did. Four times. <laughs> yeah. I've been giving Nolan over the pants handies with eye contact the entire time. I've busted four times <laughs> this entire thing <laughs> since we've been here. Uh, well, well, with that, we bid thee. Aquif. Aquif.